These calculations show what is probably happening with which GPUs are getting the priority in production in NVIDIA's lineup, according to Gigabyte's CEO. Now, this is interesting because these statements were made prior to the whole explosion in 5070 Ti, is it or is it not canceled stuff that we've been talking about the last couple of days. It's a really interesting article from Tom's Hardware that I will link in the video description. All my sources will be linked there. And this is Gigabyte CEO explaining NVIDIA's potential GPU supply strategy amid crushing memory shortages. Gross revenue per gigabyte of GDDR7 memory could decide what products thrive. So it's important to understand what companies care about. Obviously money, but specifically when they publish financial results, they focus usually the top line headline numbers as revenue, you wanna see revenue increasing year over year, quarter over quarter, etc. And then you also wanna see high margins. So you want high margins and revenue increasing. That's what companies care about. So now you throw yourself into the situation of a company who has a now limited uh, supply. So you can now have to decide how to allocate that to maximize numbers like gross revenue. You want revenue to stay as high as possible. So how do you do that? Well, here's the direct quote from Gigabyte's CEO. And again, this was given during CES prior to this whole explosion over the 5070 Ti, Asus statements, etc. He says, they cannot produce only high-end or low-end products, but they can, for example, they have one, two, three, four, five segments. They focus on one, three, and five and reduce the percentage on two and four because on two and four, the revenue contribution for gigab per gigabyte of memory is lower. They will calculate how much revenue each segment contributes per gigabyte of memory. So what are we saying here? Basically, NVIDIA doesn't want to leave the high end or the low end or the mid-range because they want to keep market share. That's another thing that they're gonna care about. So, you know, some people just can't afford to buy a high-end GPU, so you need to sell them a lower-end GPU. But right now they target, you know, you got your 5050, your 5060, your 5060 Ti, eight gigabyte and 16 gigabyte, and your 5070, and your 5070 Ti, and your 5080, and your 5090. So there's a range there where you could reduce some of those offerings, or at least reduce the percentage of your resource that you have available that's being allocated to, you know, the two and the four, the ones kind of here and the here. So you still have some low, you still have some mi middle, you still have some high to try to make sales in those categories. But how do you decide where to focus it? You look at the revenue contribution per gigabyte of memory. Since the gigabytes of memory is your supply constraint at this time. So he gives an example of a $300 GPU like the 5060 for which the memory contrib uh, contributes $35 per gigabyte of revenue, whereas for a $400 eight gigabyte GPU, that product would contribute $50 per gigabyte of memory. For a $500 card with a 16 gigabyte of memory, that puts you at only 32 gigabytes of revenue per gigabyte, then the contribution is lower. So let's go ahead and look at the type of calculation we're doing here. So in other words, if you have a $300 GPU like an RTX 5060 that uses eight gigabytes of VRAM to produce and you divide 300 by eight, you get 37.5. This means that it, your limited supply of VRAM, if you use it on one of these cards, you can generate a revenue of $37.5 gigab uh, per gigabyte. Whereas if you took an RTX 5060 Ti 8 gigabyte, which has a $380 MSRP and uses the same eight gigabytes of VRAM, you can produce $47.5 of revenue per gigabyte. Now, what if instead you made the 16 gigabyte 5060 Ti, which has an MSRP of $430? That would only produce 26.875 
dollars per gigabyte of revenue. So significantly less. So now, if in the actual market you could sell more of these and you had an unlimited supply of gigabytes of revenue, perhaps it's not a dumb product to offer because maybe more people want the 16 gigabyte card than the eight gigabyte card and would have been willing to pay the, uh, the extra money. But if you are supply constrained by your gigabytes of memory, then it makes more sense to sell the eight gigabyte card because you can generate more total revenue with your limited supply. So if we continue along, cards like the RTX 5070, which offer 12 gigabytes of memory. How does that fit into this stack? Well, this would produce $45.83 of revenue per gigabyte of your limited resource. A card like the 5070 Ti actually is pretty similar at 750 divided by 16, since it has 16 gigabytes of memory. Well, that's 46.875, so pretty similar. So you might be like, well, why would the 5070 Ti, according to rumors, be having its uh, production decreased if maybe not actually completely canceled or end of life? Well, it's because of the product segment lineup that he was discussing here, right? So you have your one, two, three, four, five product segments. In other words, the 5070 Ti is near the high end of what people are willing to, pu to pay, right? Your 5090 is a Halo product that's just outside of most normal consumers' consideration. So you really have the 5070 Ti and the 5080 uh, at maybe that five class of product tier, and then your 5090 is in a class of its own, right? That's the idea. So let's do the calculation for the $1,000 product. Uh, which uses the same 16 gigabytes of memory. Well, that produces $62.5 per gigabyte of your limited resource. So if you could choose to produce a limited number of GPUs and you're targeting the high end but not crazy Halo product segment, would you allocate your resource towards the 5070 Ti, which gets you $46.875 per gigabyte of your limited resource, or the 5080, which gets you 62.5. Obviously, the 62.5 makes more sense from a financial perspective for the company. Now, uh, if we compare that to you know cards like this, well, why would you even make any of the 5060 Ti 8 gigabytes if they only get you 47.5, and your 5080 could get you 62.5? Wouldn't you only make 5080s? Well, the problem is there's a lot of people who just can't buy a 5080, but they can buy one of these. So you don't want to exit that segment entirely. So that's the idea. You look through your lineup, and if you're gonna delete certain things from your lineup, you look at the ones that are targeting a similar market segment, and you delete the one, or reduce the supply of, rather than fully delete, okay? Um, that one. Now, how does the 5090 factor in all of this? Well, technically it has a $2,000 MSRP, although good luck finding one for that price for 32 gigabytes of VRAM. So essentially it's also one of the highest revenue per gigabyte of VRAM producers. And in reality, these things sell a lot more than this. So they're actually even better than that. So it makes sense why they would continue to produce uh, at 5090s and 5080s, but would reduce the production of, if not actually completely cancel, 5070 Ti's. Now, I think that the 5070 itself, not the Ti version, still makes some sense in this lineup because first of all, it's targeting kind of a middle product segment. Again, if you're looking at that one, two, three, four, five, you could see your 5060 Ti 8 gigabyte here, you could see your 5070 here, and you could see your 5080 here, whereas they're reducing the 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte and 5070 Ti as far as that kind of reduction. That's how this makes sense. It fits into what they're doing. So I think that this really explains what is happening as far as the decision-making that is being made in these companies. Again, if you look at ASUS's public statement regarding the 5070 Ti and the 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte, it 
absolutely makes sense. They're saying that these have not been discontinued or designated as end of life. They have no plan to stop selling these models, but current fluctuations in supply for both products are primarily due to memory supply constraints, which have affected production. You know, they're saying temporarily. So just, you know, if we get unlimited memory supply again, then this would no longer be the case. But until then, this has affected production output and restocking cycles. As a result, availability may appear. In other words, I think we should say is limited in certain markets, but you shouldn't interpret it as a complete halt to production, etc. Anyway, the point is, what they're saying here is these models absolutely have been affected by the reduction in memory supply. And why are they focusing on statements about these particular models being affected? Again, these calculations seem to explain the story. You have a business who wants to keep their revenue as high as possible. And it's not just NVIDIA wanting to do that, it's their board partners as well, like Gigabyte and Asus, etc. So they are going to want NVIDIA to give them the cards that they can keep their revenue as high as possible, especially if it is going to be somewhat limited due to the supply. So they want to keep these revenue targets as high as possible. And again, they also want to keep margins high. So I'm not getting into that, but that's not the same calculation we're looking at here. But if you think that the margin that they're getting off the, uh, the 50, uh, sorry, 5070 Ti is exactly the same as the margin they're getting off the 5080, especially when you look at 5080s generally sell above their MSRP, yeah, it, it, it's not exactly the same. So they also want to keep margins high. Now we have less of an ability to see the actual gross margins on these products. So that's why this calculation is something that we can do publicly right here based on the information of the MSRP and the VRAM capacity. Whereas looking into the margins is going to take a little bit more speculation. Uh, you know, you can do some calculations to try to get a good idea of what those margins are. Uh, but I haven't been able to find like some publicly available, this is the gross margin on this exact GPU, publicly stated by NVIDIA to investors. Maybe I'm missing it, but I couldn't find that publicly available anywhere. So anyway, this does a lot to explain what is happening. Also, it's exactly in line with this leak from HKEPC uh, that is the main one that I've been relying on because it just sounded right to me, <laughs> remember? Uh, so this leak, again, that came out before the whole, like, is the 5070 Ti canceled uh, situation is if a model like the 5060 Ti has both 8 gigabyte and 16 gigabyte versions, NVIDIA will focus on supplying the 8 gigabyte version. When two different models, such as the 5060 8 gigabyte and 5060 Ti 8 gigabyte, share the same memory capacity, the higher tier model, the 5060 Ti, will be prioritized for supply. Similarly, if the 5060 Ti, RTX 5070 Ti, and RTX 5080 are all 16 gigabyte models, the highest tier model among them, the 5080, will receive supply priority. The AIC partners also disclosed that it has not yet been decided whether the 5070 12 gigabyte will have to make way, meaning its memory allocation could be redirected to the higher end 5080. Regarding the top tier RTX 5090 and 5090 DV2, these models are not subject to this specific prioritization mechanism. However, due to the general memory shortage, their supply volume will inevitably be affected. This implies that NVIDIA intends to streamline its SKU lineup. Again, here's this word streamline that we've been seeing pop up. Concentrating its main supply on the 5060 Ti 8GB, 5080, 5090 DV2, and 5090. The supply for other models will be significantly reduced. So this has been the one that I've been going along with all along, which is... I think stating it in the most realistic words, they are prioritizing these specific models and deprioritizing these specific models because of these calculations. Keep revenue as high as possible given their limited su supply of VRAM. So no, I don't think certain models have been completely canceled and Nvidia has been careful to state that nothing is completely canceled. The word should be prioritized and deprioritized until the supply of VRAM becomes 
unlimited again, and so you can make your decisions based on other factors when you're trying to maximize revenue. Hopefully this helps you guys understand the situation even better. Uh, and it is also important to note that this uh, quote from the Gigabyte CEO was not saying that this is exactly what NVIDIA is doing. It was saying what they think would make sense to do. S that Lynn described NVIDIA's potential GPU allocation strategy. So it was describing a potential strategy, not specifically stating that this is what NVIDIA is doing. So I don't want that to be misconstrued in the video, but it certainly makes a whole heck of a lot of sense based on what uh, businesses care about for numbers to publish and financial statements and what kind of supply is available. I hope all of you still manage to have an excellent day.